This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. You can always take some time to visit our website at uh, www.drpaul.org. That is uh, www.drpaul.org. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, cholesterol. What should we do about it? You see, when we talk about cholesterol, there are three lipofractions. These are lipoproteins. There is a HDL, LDL, and VLDL. These three form the lipid fraction. And when you order cholesterol, you usually get even triglycerides. Now, you may not get everything when you order a lipid profile. For example, you may get triglycerides, but if you know a few formulas, it's very easy to derive all of them. For example, if you want to know VLDL, just divide triglyceride level by five. So if you want VLDL, just derive it by dividing triglyceride levels by five. So total cholesterol is equal to LDL plus HDL plus VLDL. So if somebody tells you the triglyceride levels divided by, by five and you would get VLDL, then add it to the rest or subtract HDL from total cholesterol and then subtract again the, the value of VLDL, then you will get LDL. So you can get all the numbers you need to know the lipid profile of a patient. Now, one important thing I want to tell you is don't get fooled by total cholesterol levels. There may be two patients with same cholesterol levels, but those two patients are not the same. Why? Because, for example, let us take like this. There is one patient with cholesterol level 275. There is another patient with cholesterol level with 275. But the first one has HDL 20. The second one has HDL 60. So the second one is better than the first one. Why? The higher the HDL level, the lower the risk of coronary artery disease. So if two patients with the same total cholesterol level, if their HDL level varies, or if their LDL level varies, they have different risk factors. So don't get, uh, uh, don't start your treatment based on total cholesterol level. Always look, look for other things like what is the LDL level? What is uh, the HDL level? What is the triglyceride levels? Because different classes of drugs work differently to reduce these values. Now, many people also go by ratios, like ratio of total cholesterol by HDL. The lower the uh, ratio, the better, or lower the risk of coronary artery disease. Again, go by the num don't go by the numbers. For example, 300 by 60 is equals to 5, and also 150 by 30 is, uh, is, is also equal to 5 but there is difference between 60 and 30. The point is the numbers do not matter. Ultimately, you need to go into the lipid fractions and take what exactly are those values, what are uh, the risk factors patient has, those are the things. And there is also geographic variables. For example, in uh, uh, Western people, like uh, they, they always have more cholesterol levels than Asian people. Now, many people actually will have high cholesterol level, but it would be uh, normal for them. Now let me talk a few minutes about uh, the basic uh, structure of uh, these uh, lipoproteins. You don't have to go into very, very small details, but uh, if we look into where the patient is exactly like uh, the children or the young adults, relatively high cholesterol uh, may have lower levels later in life. So if you take these lipid levels, you always check them with time. Sometimes patient may have like 230 this month. After two months, his cholesterol may go down to 200. So with time, cholesterol level changes. Now reducing cholesterol levels in healthy middle-aged persons, when they have coronary heart disease, 
it actually, if you treat it, you are actually saving lives. Now, let us go and talk about those things for a few minutes. As I said earlier, the higher the HDL level, the lower the risk of coronary artery disease. And if you take a middle-aged person, and if you measure their cholesterol level, and if they have a, a, a high coronary artery disease in their family, if you start them on statins, you will always see a low level of mortality in these patients. Many studies have shown benefit in reducing coronary artery disease, new onset anginas, and uh, peripheral vascular disease in these patients. Why? Statins like uh, lovastatin, pravastatin, they not only reduce the cholesterol level, but they also reduce the inflammation in coronary arteries. We call it pleiotrophic effect. What is pleiotrophic effect? The statins, they increase the vascularity in uh, heart tissues and thereby increase the perfusion of these tissues and reduce the attacks of heart disease. So we should always aggressively treat um, uh, very, very high cholesterol levels associated with the high LDL and uh, low HDL levels in these patients because it uh, stops the progression of atherosclerosis. When the plaque forms in the coronary arteries, it grows year after year. So when we uh, start these patients on cholesterol-lowering uh, drugs, especially HMG coa reductase inhibitors, that actually stops that progression of atherosclerotic plaques and reduces the risk of uh, strokes in these patients. And you know very well, um, the jump fibrogel, the fibrates, fenofibrate and jump fibrogel, they increase the HD level, but let me make you one thing clear, they haven't shown very clear benefit in terms of mortality rates. So we do primary prevention and we do secondary prevention by taking cholesterol levels into consideration. And many of these cholesterol reducing medications, they come with uh, their own side effects. So we keep those things in our minds when we start these medications. So one class of uh, cholesterol lowering medications may have different effects from a different class. So the main points are first take the lipid profile. Just don't go by the total cholesterol level. Establish what is LDL, HDL, triglyceride levels, and then choose um, uh, the medication based on the risk factors the patient possesses. Now, there are other conditions that actually increase the risk of uh, high cholesterol. And always we should uh, remember those conditions because, I mean, uh, uh, based on those conditions, we should... Uh, uh, treat this patient. Obesity, they will have high triglycerides and uh, low HDL levels. And uh, also sedentary life, people who don't work will have high cholesterol level. Diabetes increases triglycerides and it increases uh, total cholesterol levels. If the patient is uh, alcoholic, they will have uh, increased triglyceride levels, increased HDL levels. And hypothyroidism, metabolism decreases and their total cholesterol level increases hyperthyroidism, their metabolism will be high, so they will have low cholesterol level. Nephrotic syndrome, they will have high total cholesterol level. Chronic kidney disease, they will have a high cholesterol level. And uh, uh, you take liver disease like cirrhosis, they will have decreased total cholesterol. Why? Because liver plays an important role in the cholesterol synthesis. But if they have obstructive liver disease, they will have high cholesterol level. Uh, so all these things, Cushing's disease, for example, they will have increased total cholesterol. And drugs like oral contraceptives, they will have increased triglycerides and uh, uh, increased total cholesterol level. And diuretics, they increase total cholesterol level. And uh, they also increase triglyceride levels. And beta blockers, they increase total cholesterol and decrease HDL. So the point is... Uh, we always take the patient's clinical conditions into considerations before uh, starting them on a medication. And that's about it for today. And you can always visit us at www.drpaul.org and uh, subscribe to our daily videos, USMLA, PLAB, and uh, 
uh, patient information videos. We have all kinds of videos posted for better patient care. And visit us at uh, drpaul.org. Thank you very much.